travel home to where this shooter's story began. That's nice. I basically lived out here. Every day after school, we would just come out here for a little bit. Now you're going to start following like you did when you were little. He takes us to the places that shaped him. We've had so many memories in this gym, not even just in high school. He was like a sponge. He was always listening. He was always watching what we were doing. And where Uncle Max is in full effect. You can see through the clouds. My family. That's really the only reason I go home. He is an example for them every day, even though he's not able to be around all the time. Paying it forward in his first basketball camp. Oh, yeah, go, Lucas, go, Lucas. Max's motivation was not putting money in his pocket, it's putting the Andrew Wisher Foundation. One, two, three. All while never changing who he is on the hardwood. Max comes to battle every single day. Struce, kaboom! Max is very competitive. Max got a little fire in him. The ability to be where I am and to be playing on the level that I am, there's really no words to describe it. Inside the Heat, Max Struess. Welcome to Inside the Heat. Hello again, everyone. I'm Eric Reed. On this special hometown edition, Max Struess will take us back to where he grew up and show us the places and the people that helped shape him. In his third season with the Miami Heat, this former undrafted player has proven himself every step of the way. His talent, toughness, work ethic, and resolve have helped him ascend in the NBA, but to fully comprehend the roots of his determination, you must first understand where he came from. So Max gave us an all-access look on his recent trip back to his hometown of Hickory Hills, Illinois. Growing up in Hickory Hills was a lot of fun. There was a lot of kids in the neighborhood that always wanted to get out and play, and our parents were always working. It's kind of a blue-collar neighborhood, so we always were going home from school and going to the park or going to somebody's house, just always finding activities to do and, and staying outside and growing up in a you know safe environment where we could go out and do that stuff. We're at the Hickory Hills baseball fields where Max's athletic career actually started. He always was the coach. He played baseball in college, so he always coached the team, and I always kind of played up a level. The way I coached the little kids here, I would always rotate who bet at first. He used to get mad because I could have batted him first or second or third every night, you know, and I had him bat ninth or tenth, and, and I go, well, you got to do it like everybody else. And I'm glad we, you know, had those had those memories out here because uh, keeps me home. Yeah, it keeps me home, right? <laughs> yeah. That's where you get the chip on his shoulder. Probably made of me. Yeah, yeah right. So. But I kind of had all these flashbacks of memories when I was younger of, you know, going to watch my brother play or going to watch my sister play and, and just growing up there and being around those those fields and the parks with my family. This was always somewhere to go, an outlet and someone, somewhere to hang out with friends and, and just be around. Probably ate dinner six nights a week out yeah. here. So it wasn't a hot dog, it was a piece Na of pizza. Nachos. Yeah. yeah. We're at my house. We moved here when I was like four, and then I think my dad put this in probably a couple years after. We had the space, so he's like, I'll just black it out and uh, put some blacktop down and, and uh, make a little court. So I basically lived out here. My brother would bring his friends over here when I was little, and I would just try to hop in the games with them. They met in our yard and played and everything, and Max just hung with them. He was always the little guy, but they always took him under the wing. Oh, that's nice. You know, it was a godsend. We put that hoop up there, and I always tell people, best investment we ever made. That court was where I would go to get away from everything, and I really found joy in being out there by myself and, and with my friends and my family. There you go. Every day after school, we would just come out here for a little bit and tried to get as much energy out from being in school out here. <laughs> what is that face you're making? Now you're gonna start following like you did when you were little. My sister actually was very physical. We definitely would not talk to each other for like weeks. Yeah. Uh, just like getting in fights and being like. Uh, and a week later it would be like, are you still mad about that game? And then we'd laugh about it and it would be over. I can make it a 10 day after this, man. <laughs> this was great that our parents did this. This was like a big part of us on our own and with each other like getting better. Go back in. Nope. I was fortunate enough to have them as role models and balance out the ways and, and learn from them on how to handle yourself as an adult. All the competitive drive I have and 
the urge to play sports all the time and the, the want to to get better and all that comes from them. Having that out there kind of set the foundation for my future in basketball and I'm very thankful that my dad did that for us. What are you eating, Nate? Yeah. Pizza. Pizza. Our dinners have changed over the years. Now that we're all getting older, my brother and sister are starting to have kids, so the table's full and it's, it's just fun. A lot of laughter and you know when we, when we can get together, it's just good to see everybody and, and enjoy each other. You guys got your food? You're all set? It's just about getting together and sharing stories and finding what's going on in everybody's life. Everybody's just focusing on their family time, which is the most important thing to them. You can see through the clouds. How do you do that? Go ahead, put them on again. Yeah, put those on. When he's home, he's around all the time. My kids just love Max. What are these? Whether he knows it or not, he is an example for them every day, even though he's not able to be around all the time. To be able to have those moments to share together and you know be as close as we are, it's a lot of fun to just be with each other. Welcome back to Inside the Heat. As Max Struess takes us to his hometown in Illinois, he brings us back to the place where sports really shaped him. It was at Amos Alonzo Stagg High School where Max was a two-sport athlete in both basketball and baseball. His coaches there recognized something special in Max immediately, and he quickly became a Struess that was to be remembered. I'll always be grateful for going to Stag. You know, my parents pushed me to go public school and followed in my brother and sister's footsteps and never looked back. I hope you remember my combo still. I'm not even going to lie to you. It was like 17. No, that doesn't work. I'm blessed to be able to go to Stag and to be a Charger for life. had so many memories in this gym, not even just in high school. First time I met Max was at a little kid's camp. His older brother um, played for me, uh, Marty. When my brother was coming to camp, I would just tag along. When my sister was coming here, I would tag along. And he was like a sponge. He was always listening. He was always watching what we were doing. I think that helped a lot, because when he got to the high school, he was already part of everything we were doing. Having a relationship with somebody for that long, uh, they know you, they, they see you grow up. And to have him still in my life, it's special. This is, this is also, crazy because he's never rebounded for me before. I think the foundation for Max is what you guys are seeing in Miami is his character. As a coach, when I watch the Heat play, it's just your organization, the way you do things, the way they play, he fits in perfectly with what they do. I'm just impressed with the organization and I think it's a perfect fit for him and his character. Our school relies on two and three sport athletes and knowing what Max's potential was in baseball. And I, I know the baseball coach very well, and I knew that he'd be a difference maker for the baseball team. I'm super happy I play baseball. Um, you know, everybody now thinks it's you know, one sport, that's all you can do. I think it's the opposite. I think you should play as many sports as you can and love to play in the game. So I've known him, you know, ever since he was in those camps. So he just always was around Stag. We used to joke with Marty all the time. We, like, we would be like, when's the chosen one coming? <laughs> you can't tell that to my sister, though. No. She'll get a little upset. <laughs> baseball for him when he was in high school was a hobby. I don't think he, he probably picked up a ball until practice started. I didn't touch a baseball until started. the first day of baseball, yeah. Until basketball season ended, I didn't touch a baseball. But so, it kind of just came natural to me. And, and that's kind of how I explained to to other people like that how good he was like he, he didn't have to do anything other than just show up his competitive nature helped our team out tremendously he had the ability to just be a great teammate it, it didn't matter if you were his best friend or you were the 20th guy in the team he didn't treat anybody differently and I, I think that trait in high school and adolescence and whatnot I think there's it's a reason why you see how great his family is and the things he's doing for our community and all that stuff. It's, you saw that at an early age, no doubt. The option to stay home 
um, for college was something I always was interested in. Having my role models was my brother and sister stay home, and I always loved having the ability to go to their games and to support them. So when it was my decision to go to school, I wanted to do the same thing. To be able to have my parents see me play, to go home for dinners, I always loved the idea of having that option, and I think it speaks volumes to what our, our family is about. I knew he was going to play Division One basketball. From there, I knew he was going to make it to the NBA, and. I know he thought the same thing. Be dogs, be hungry, show these people why we should have been drafted. Going undrafted is tough and you don't know if you're going to get another opportunity. So to be able to have the heat, you know, give me that and to just take advantage of it. Here's Struess again. Kaboom again! Max Struess on fire! That's really all I could say about my time here is every opportunity I've, I've had, I've, I've just went in and took advantage of it and, and capitalized on it. Miami earning the top seed in the East, beginning their playoff run to a hopeful fourth NBA title. Struess with that juice playoff style. That was my first playoffs that I was actually playing in. So to be a part of a winning team, number one team in the East, and to be a big part of it was honestly crazy to me. Everything just kind of came so fast, and I tried to just live in the moment and, and take it one day at a time and, and just um, you know, focus on the task at hand. And Struess is doing his job. It's just a dream come true for him and for us to be along for the ride. It's just indescribable what, you know, what the feeling we have for him. Struess fires from deep. Got it. Looking back on it now, it kind of speaks volumes to, you know, what I've kind of conquered uh, in my NBA journey so far. The ability to be where I am, and to be playing on the level that I am. Struess for three, it's good! There's really no words to describe it. I just want to keep doing it, and, and, and I'm always looking what's next. Uh, and then we can recollect and, and gather my, my thoughts at the end of my career. Welcome back to Inside the Heat. You know, Max Struess is extremely close to his family, and he makes it a priority to head home to be with them as often as he can. But in the summer of 2022, Max's trip home was for a special event, his first annual Max Struess basketball camp, and it was a family affair, organized and run by Max and his entire family, all to raise money for another local family and a great cause. My camp started with the idea of the Andrew Wisher Foundation. That's something that's near and dear to me, near and dear to my heart. The foundation was created in honor of my older brother, Andrew Wisher. Andrew was 21 years old when he passed away of colorectal cancer. He had one and only wish about a week before he passed away, and that was to pay forward the kindness that he and our family received during that battle. To honor that request, uh, we started the Andrew Wisher Foundation, and what we do is incredibly simple. We, we raise as much money as we can, and we gift it to families with adolescents or young adults battling cancer. We're very close friends with the family. Max played um, AEU ball with the youngest son. As Max's journey through his career has continued to grow. He was, you know, the first to raise his hand to try to try to help and partner up with us in any way possible. To be able to raise money for a foundation like that was something that I, I really wanted to do. And what better way to do that than a basketball camp? Go, 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 go. The camp itself, it was for the community to have fun, to teach basketball. I took it upon myself to do that in my hometown at my high school. Go Lucas, go Lucas, go Lucas. Oh yeah, oh yeah, go Lucas, go Lucas. Olivia, how you doing? Good. good to see you. His story is so good because he went from just like a D2 player to this big NBA star. That's a lot to look up to. In our family, anytime somebody wants to do something, we all jump in. If you are walking around the gyms, you're seeing every single one of his family members involved. We're just, you know, really rallying around him and making sure that this can be as successful as possible. To be able to have my family run my camp was awesome. They just took it upon themselves to dive into each one of their roles and just make it the best experience possible for each kid. My wife and I were so proud of our, all three of our kids that they wanted to help. I think it's Max's character. If he wasn't who he is, people wouldn't be as upfront about helping. Can we give it up for Dave Vincent? Left hand. Left hand. Right hand. Right hand. Ah! 
had invited me. It was pretty much that simple. And it, it's just awesome that you know our team can support one another, and, and it just shows how genuine these relationships and bonds are. Good job, good job, good job. Left hand, left hand, left hand. Good to see you. Thanks so much for coming. Oh, Very thank nice you guys for having me. He flew here today to be here with us. Three-time world champion, Udonis Haslam. For me, it's just me showing my appreciation, you know, for, for Max. I've learned a lot. It's only right to share some of these things, uh, you know, with the kids, with the youth, and then with the guys that I play the game of basketball with, just to help those guys be the best version of themselves. These things that these guys are teaching you here, you can apply these things in life wherever you go. I really, really want you guys to understand that. The best thing about Gabe and Udonis the whole time they were there was they wanted to be involved. They wanted to be with each kid. And they wanted to sign every autograph, and that just shows you how special people they are. I dreamed about doing this since I was little. I grew up coming to these camps. And for you guys to be part of the first ever Max Drews basketball camp, you guys should feel honored. I feel honored to get to know every single one of you guys. This whole week has just been such a positive thing for our school and our community. When Max got in a financial position to make a difference, he jumped right in right away. Max's motivation was not putting money in his pocket, it's being the Wisher Foundation. All the money that Max and team raised immediately benefited a new, a new beneficiary. Perhaps the most special part of it at the very end, we got to welcome a new family member. The Gerardo Gomez family, we wanted to welcome you to the Wish Forever Foundation and Wish Forever family. Max has a little gift for you guys here as well. Welcome to the family, man. There has never really been an NBA player from my hometown to be able to be that guy and to come back home and be able to be a, you know, a positive light for kids in our community is something I've always wanted to do. Struce is loose on three. One, two, three. Welcome back to Inside the Heat. Max Struess grew up about 20 miles from downtown Chicago, and he spent time in the Windy City when he attended and played college basketball at DePaul University, and he enjoys going back there as much as he can. While we were in Chi-Town, he took us on a boat tour of the river, something he had never done before. But whether it's trips to the city or to his favorite spots in his hometown of Hickory Hills, Max's priority is to simply never forget where he came from. We are here at Pepo's. I've been going here since I could barely even walk. This is my dad's favorite place. Um, so we've been going here forever and can't go wrong with the guts. So here we are at Pepo's, my, my favorite spot in town. The guts is our claim to fame. The topping we put on the sandwich is diced pickles, tomatoes, onions, dry seasoning, vinegar, and oil. It's our claim to fame out here. You gotta get the guts. No guts, no guts, no glory, right? No guts, right? no glory, that's right. That's our motto. I went to Pepo's every day after school, before games after games. I loved going to Pepo's, so uh, that's my hometown spot. The love that they've showed me, they've been a part of my journey throughout the NBA, and they've just always been a fan of mine. We've talked about getting my own sandwich, putting like all the meats on it, like turkey, ham, roast beef, salami, yep. and calling it like the max. To have my own sub sandwich there is so special because I'm always going to be a, a part of, you know, that neighborhood now. When, when people go to there and order a sandwich, they're going to see my name, they're going to see my jersey. My home is, is special to me, so to be able to have that and then always be a part of it, I'll always be thankful for that. My family. Um, that's really the only reason I go home. Family is, is the most important thing to all of us. He's always like about family. Anytime he has a chance, he tries to come back to Chicago, see as many people as he can. That's really the only reason. I want to be around my family. I want to be at birthday parties, holidays, um, events, and just be a part of it and not miss out on anything. We're here downtown on the river, uh, about to head out in the lake. Uh, we're here on the Wendella boat tours, and I'm here with my mom, Stacy, and my dad, and uh, just ready to see the city, uh, learn more about it. Everybody I've talked to said these are amazing, and I'm really excited to be on the, the Wendella and uh, enjoy the city. Now we're on Lake Michigan, which is the third largest of the Great Lakes. I never really went to the city as a kid, um, but I just thought it was important to show downtown Chicago as, as a part of my life because I went to DePaul. I still live there every summer, so I, I go back, and I think it, Chicago is the best city in the world. It's just 
a beautiful place and I wanted you guys to see what it truly has to offer and, and there was no better way to do that than on a Wendella boat tour. The biggest thing that I've seen from him is that he hasn't changed. He's always just been my cousin Max. Throughout this whole process, he's just stayed himself. Struce, kaboom! He did it! That man is a machine. Struce, he fires it, knocks it down at the buzzer. Can you taste the juice from Struce? Gotta love it. Most shooters are a little bit easygoing, calm. Max is not the kind of shooter. Max is very competitive. Max got a little fire in. Oh, what a great strip by Struess. Blocked from behind by Struess. Struess steals the pass, put it back in for two. He knows he has to prove himself every day. You look at Summer League now, there's someone in Summer League that wants to be Max Struess. People saw him in the NBA, on the Bulls or in the G League, and they're like, I'm, I'm glad he made it to the league. He's not done. Struess getting the screen from Ben. Little mid-range pop. Oh, 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 beautiful. He continues to add to his offensive arsenal. The bar just keeps going up. He just isn't ready to find out where that ceiling is. So when you ask me, like, what are our expectations for next year? Greatness. I mean, on the court and off the court, really. Butler spinning underneath. Great pass for Struess. Max comes to battle every single day, not just in the games. And I know, I know he's going to come back this year um, better than ever. My personal expectations for this season are to win. Uh, that's really all that matters here and all our team is about. You know, we were so close to reaching our goal last year, um, to make the finals, to have a chance to win a championship. It kills us every single day. We know we have what it takes to reach the championship and we got the guys to do it. We're just excited and ready for it and I want to be a big part of that and help in any way that I can. We hope you enjoyed getting to know Max Struess a little bit better and in his hometown, around his family and friends, as we all learn more about how he became the man and the player that he is today. Max is loyal and grounded, and he wants to give back all he has learned to the next generation. It's a perfect fit in Heat culture, and he continues to make his mark on this franchise and this city. Max effort and production can be expected once again as he continues to write another compelling story of success right here in Miami. And thank you for watching this hometown edition of Inside the Heat. I'm Eric Reed.